regular domestic sewing machine and we're using a Singer Heavy Duty, your fabric, a sweatband, and these sweatbands are available at capsupplyco.com. Interfacing, and this is a heavier weight adhesive interfacing, a closure for the back, and bias tape or a bias tape kit. Either one will work. And of course your pattern, and this pattern is available at properfitclothing.com. And links for everything will be available in the description below, so go and check that out. So go ahead and cut your pattern out on the outside of the black line. And the fabric we're using is a soft wool, and you can find this at almost any fabric store. Go ahead and take your pattern, lay it on your fabric, trace it out, and cut it. And you're going to want to make a little mark on your top panel, that way you know where to sew to. And then do the same thing for the top of the front panel. And in the end, you're going to want to end up with two top panels, one front panel, and two side panels. So take your two top panels, place right sides together, and sew just up to that line. And this pattern calls for a quarter inch seam allowance, so keep that in mind as you're sewing. And now we're going to be showing you how to set up your twin needle. And this is super simple. Just install like a normal needle, set your machine to zigzag with zero width, and thread two spools of thread the same exact way. We're going to show you two different options for adding on your bias tape and these are just two different bias tape folders. The one on the right is just one you can get at any hobby store and the one on the left is available at capsupplyco.com. We are going to be using the one on the left just because it's a little bit easier for us to use and we've been using it for a while. But honestly they both do the same thing so use whatever you're comfortable with. Whatever one you're using, line it up with your presser foot and then just tape it right on your machine. You definitely are going to want to make sure this is secure so that way nothing's moving around when you're sewing on that bias tape. Now all you have to do is cut your bias tape to the measurement of the folder and you're ready to start sewing. And now you're going to take your two top panels and sew right down that center seam. This will add a nice double stitch on top and also the bias tape covering up that seam on the bottom. So next we're going to be adding bias tape to the back of that opening.
And for this video, we are going to use the pre-made bias tape, and there is a link for this in the description. And you can get this in a bunch of different colors, but if you want it to match a hat, I recommend using this bias tape making kit. And you can check this out in our other videos, we show how to use this. It's super simple and it comes with a bunch of different sizes and it's very easy to use. We definitely use this kit more often because that way we can match the fabric with our hat. But for the video, we're just going to show you that there are other options out there. So what you're going to do is take your bias tape and you're going to want to do that opening right where the ponytail is going to be coming out of the hat. And all you have to do is lay your bias tape on that edge and just do a straight stitch all the way across. And this can be a little tedious, so just take your time. And if it's looking a little bunchy in that center part, all you have to do is do a little tack stitch and it should be nice and flush. And then next we're going to be adding the bias tape to the back edges. But before you're going to do this, you're going to want to sew together right in the middle those two points. And then just hold them together and do a little tack stitch. Then just like before, place your bias tape on that edge and take your time, sew all the way across to the other edge. And there you have it, your back opening is nice and sealed off. And again, I recommend using fabric that matches your cap and using that bias tape making kit. It just makes it look a little bit more professional in the end. Next, we're gonna be adding the interfacing to the front panel. And all you have to do is iron this on. And we're using a piece of paper to go over that so we don't get the iron all sticky. And then go ahead and cut that front panel out. Now go ahead and take your front panel and your top panel, place the right sides together, and make sure you're using the top of the front panel and just sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then go ahead and trim the remainder off. and then put your bias tape folder back on and go across that seam. And now we're gonna be putting the side panels on and place right sides together and start at the front edge and work your way all the way across that curve. And you're going to have to pull that side panel along with the top panel and work around that curve. Definitely the more you do this, the easier it will get. And it's kind of hard at first, but just do it a few times and it gets super easy. Then go ahead and trim that remainder fabric. and do the same thing for the other side panel. Now that you have your side panels on, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and add bias tape. And this can be a little tricky, just work around that curve and try to keep it flat.
And the last step for the crown is adding a size strip, and this is added on the inside, and these are available at capsupplyco.com. This adds for a little bit of structure at the bottom of the crown, and will also help with sewing on the sweatband. So just add it on the bottom edge of the crown and sew all the way around. Next step is making the brim. Go ahead and grab your brim, whatever brim you're using, trace around the outside and down just a little bit past. Then from there, grab your sewing machine and do a straight stitch all the way around that arch. Now go ahead and trim about a quarter inch from that seam. Flip the right sides out and then start maneuvering your brim into position. And if you are satisfied with the look and the tightness, you can skip this next step, but we are going to be adding some stitches to the top of the brim. And we are using a guide that will be available on capsupplyco.com. It just helps with getting nice, neat stitches around. As you can see, we're doing one line at a time, adjusting it, and then doing the next, and then making sure they're nice and even. Honestly, you can use any guide for this step, something that just keeps that brim from sliding all around. Now that your brim is nice and tight into position, I recommend using a zipper foot for this and then go around and make a seam along that back edge of the brim. Pull towards the back of the brim to make that fabric nice and tight as you sew. Now go ahead and trim about a half an inch from the inside of that brim. Now you're going to want to mark the center front of your crown and the center of your brim. Place the right sides together and I recommend using a zipper foot for this part as well and start from the center and sew towards the outside and once you have one side done, do the same for the other side. This helps keep that brim in the center of the crown. Now we're going to be attaching the sweatband. This step we made our own attachment and we made this out of heavier stock paper. All you have to do is make a little sleeve that your sweatband fits in there nice and snug and then go ahead and tape that onto your sewing machine. 
It serves as a guide so that way the sweatband doesn't slide all around while you're sewing it onto the crown. Once you have your sweatband guide into position, go ahead and roll over the edge and then just start sewing straight all the way around. And it is really that simple. You get a nice top stitch on the outside and the sweatband will be nice and attached on the inside. And we are using professional sweatbands from capsupplyco.com. These are millinery grade and very awesome for making caps. And now we're going to be adding on a plastic snap to the back for a closure. You can literally add whatever you want onto the back. Cap Supply Co. has a huge variety of different components you can add for closures. So go ahead and roll that sweatband over towards the inside and sandwich that plastic component in between and just sew that right on. And it's really just that simple and go ahead and do this for the other side. I do recommend using a heavier weight needle for this process because you are sewing through a decent amount of material. You can also add eyelets on the side of the cap for air ventilation, and we show this in our other videos. We actually skipped this step in this video, so go and check our other videos out to kind of see how that is done. And the final step is steaming, and this helps make all those seams look nice, and that sweatband makes it nice and flush on the inside. I highly recommend doing this part, either with a steamer or an iron. It just takes the quality of the cap to that next level. There you have it, your five panel ponytail cap is complete. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, let us know what you think, and we're gonna be keeping videos coming at you, so stay tuned.